Good morning and welcome to the Citizen Sports Blist Playoff Edition, brought to you by Velocity Sports Performance in Peachtree City. I'm Citizen Sports Editor Mike Boyle, and with me is sports staff writer Kevin Wandra. Good afternoon. The playoffs have begun, and Fayette County is Winterville. That's right. Fayette County wins last night their state playoff game against Baldwin. Whitewater wins their playoff game against Lovejoy. Sandy Creek wins at Hart County. Three for three. They're all moving on to the second round, so let's just get started. I was at the Fayette County Baldwin game. Incredible game. 0-0 zero, zero after the first quarter, but Boykin and Daniels really set the tone. They had a lot of big runs. They were getting getting into space, doing very well. Second quarter, it's fourth and four. Boykin scrambles 28 yards on a quarterback keeper for a touchdown. Things are looking really good. Baldwin answers, though, scoring two touchdowns in three minutes, but they miss an extra point. So now it's 13-7. to seven. Baldwin has the ball with about a minute to go in the, uh, the half, throw a pass, Boykin intercepts it. Then Andrew Prosser comes in, throws a 30-yard pass to Matt Daniels. Then Matt Daniels throws an option pass to Terrell Davis, and they take a 14-13 to lead at the half. But there's some big other, other big plays from that half we have to talk about. Javon McConico, he recovers a Boykin fumble for a first down. Boykin has that interception. I mean, it's just amazing. Second half starts, Tim Petaway on another fourth down. They go for it, goes 37 yards with a touchdown reception from Boykin. Fayette County took chances all night last night, Kevin, and they uh, they paid off. They did not hold anything back. Well, that's something that Tommy has done all year because going back to, what was it, the Whitewater game, they went for it on fourth down. They won the game, scoring a touchdown. It was Matt Daniels, am I correct? Yeah. Um, last night, fourth down, Tim Petaway. I know the Stars Mill game, they had a fourth down. They threw a pass to Terrell Davis. That converted a fourth down. They ended up scoring on that drive. So Tommy Webb has been very aggressive this year going for it on fourth down and certainly has paid off. Well, and there's no fear. I mean, they know that this is the season to do everything they can, and they did not play with any fear last night. And there was reason to fear. Baldwin comes back towards the end of the game. It's fourth quarter. They went something like 60 yards in two plays on these two quarterback keepers. I mean, they were just tearing up the field, and it really looked bad. They throw a pass from first and goal on the 10, and Matt Daniels intercepts it on the goal line. That was a season-saving interception for Matt Daniels, and they win the game. Crowd goes wild. Uh, so they all come back next week. They're going to host Bainbridge. But we have to mention the defense because every single member of that defense stood up last night. And I'm probably missing some names, but Travis Mihalik, Barack Little, Ed Bexley, Evan Reed, William Hood, Devontae Partridge, Shamar Fletcher, who had a fumble recovery, Daniels with his interception, Boykin with his. That whole defense really stepped up last night. And another person that deserves some credit, the kicker, Luis Martinez. Not only did he do well punting, but he got those extra points, and they really did come up big. So congratulations to Fayette. They're moving on. You went to Whitewater. What happened over there? Uh, Whitewater wins its first playoff game in school history. What a memorable night for Whitewater, and definitely a memorable night for their quarterback, David Bird. I'll get to that in a little while. Uh, It didn't look good for Whitewater early. They scored on two touchdown runs, one in the first quarter and one in the second quarter to take a 14-0 lead. Lovejoy was absolutely dominating the line of scrimmage, running behind massive left tackle Andre Harris, a 6'4", 310-pound kid, just huge. Then around the midway in the second quarter, Whitewater got the break it desperately needed. Ryan Hidalgo, we've been talking about him all here, linebacker, recovered a fumble punt. Five plays later, David Bird, who came into the game very sick, he had a fever. He was throwing up the night before. The sweats, aches and pains. He connected with the wide open Tyler Morgan for a 25 yard touchdown. Bird got even better as the game went along, which is amazing again because he was sick, rushing for two touchdowns, a one yard run that capped a nine play, 57 yard drive, and a 19 yard run that completed a clock eating 12 play, 96 yard drive. Um, an amazing game for David Bird. It was by far the best performance of his high school career, one he will never forget. But he wasn't the only kid who stood out last night. Uh, fullback Colin Woody, bruising, bruising runner, was just plowing over Lovejoy in the open field, running hard in between the tackles. Uh, we discussed their defense all year, which has been outstanding. Linebacker Zach the Man. His name, I think his name was mentioned like a thousand times <laughs> last night. I think he was in like every tackle. The kid's a tackling machine. Then you got uh, Hidalgo I mentioned at a fumble recovery. He played very well on defense. He was in on a lot of tackles. Jake Fisher, a name we haven't mentioned much this year, had an interception. Uh, Justin Forrester had an interception. J.C. Jennings has been a very reliable kicker for them all season. Had a 33-yard field goal. Played very well on the defensive line. 
Now, Thomas Frierson, he didn't find much running room last night. You know, he's had a great season, but he did recover an onside kick to seal the victory. And I thought one of the coolest things last night, Mike, was almost the entire team that were rocking Mohawks. <laughs> Nice. I thought it was like uh, Mr. Pre- Mr. T appreciation night. And remember the um, the movie The Warriors? Yep. It's like White Water, come out and play. <laughs> it was just it was it was fun to be there. Congratulations to the entire White Water team, the coaching staff, the kids, and the fans. Fans were rocking, especially the student section last night. Congratulations on the twenty three to twenty one victory over Lovejoy. Well, we have to take a break, but we're going to come back and talk Sandy Creek and Landmark. So stay tuned. It doesn't matter what sport you play. It doesn't matter what position you play. It doesn't matter whether you're turning pro or just starting out. It doesn't even matter how old you are. If you want to maximize your potential, you need Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance. Maximize your potential. We guarantee it. Welcome back to the Citizen Sports Blitz, brought to you by Velocity Sports Performance in Peachtree City. Sandy Creek took a 6 to nothing halftime lead over Hart County and made it 23-8 to and got the win. Yesterday we said Sandy Creek probably was going to lose this game, so we're sorry. Yeah, we're eating crow we're right now. We're sorry. It doesn't taste good. <laughs> uh, they had some big games last night, uh, especially from Rajon Neal. Um, Rajon Neal had 182 yards rushing. He had one touchdown, is that right? Yeah. He averaged 11.4 yards per carry. He had 182 yards and 16 carries, a long run of 59 yards. What a game. When you're averaging 11.4 yards per carry, it's a touchdown. I mean, excuse me, a first down per carry. Wow. Braxton Lane has two catches for 89 yards and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. 396 yards total offense for Sandy Creek. But the key is they held Hart County to 33 yards rushing and only 107 yards in the air. Uh, and this was supposed to be a high-flying passing team, and really, Sandy Creek just buckled down. In fact, there were three interceptions last night that we know of. Um, Jordan Griffin, Josh Holt, Andrew Tolls, uh, huge for their defense. Another guy had a big night on the defense, Jonathan, Jonathan Smith. Three total tackles, three tackles for a loss, and a sack. I mean, that's huge. People are stepping up all over the place for the right. Sandy Creek defense, so they had a really good night. Um, and they have a tough game ahead of them next week with North Hall. So, but we've learned our lesson. Believe me, we, <laughs> it'll be hard to pick against Sandy Creek. Congratulations to Creek, though, because you're going on the road. You have a long road trip against a, a very good Hart County team, and they just, you know, I, I'm not surprised that Sandy Creek won. I'm not, even though I pick against them, but I'm surprised that they won by the score they won by, 23 to eight. That's 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 a pounding. Well, and they kept announcing the score at the Fayette County game, and it was like six to nothing, sixteen to nothing, twenty-three to nothing. So, I mean, they really put it on Hart County. And, Never in doubt. And, and going back to Rajon Neal, we, we overlooked him because he's just having a great year for them. He's really taking over at running back. And, and again, 182 yards rushing. What a game for him. Well, and to be able to balance the carries with Josh Williams, I mean, that, that helps. To have people focusing on Braxton Lane definitely helps. So congratulations to Creek. Right. Uh, the last game that we have to talk about is Landmark. They hosted the fourth-ranked Lincoln County Red Devils last night, and it wasn't good. Um, it was 16 to nothing pretty quick. Landmark got touchdowns from Walter Leonard. He caught a touchdown pass from Tanner Bryant. Jimmy Eden caught a touchdown pass from Tanner Bryant. But that was about it. The uh, Landmark defense gave up some really big plays to Lincoln County's running back. He had two touchdown runs for over 60 yards. And when you're giving up those kind of plays to a team like Lincoln County, it's going to be pretty hard to win. This marks the second time in three years Landmark's lost in the first round, so they're going to hope to turn things around next year. They will have Tanner Bryant back. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Let's talk a little bit about playoffs real quick. Fayette County will host Bainbridge. They beat Statesboro last night, 28-14. to Whitewater plays at Thomas County Central. They beat Brunswick, 44-13. to Sandy Creek's at North Hall. North Hall beat McNair, 41-20. to So it's going to be a tough run for everybody, but that's what the playoffs are. But what we do have is three teams and the Sweet 16, and it is pretty sweet, and I'm sure they all feel pretty good about it today. Um, We'll make our predictions next week. I think we're going to be homers and pick everybody, but I'm I'm not sure. So congratulations to everybody. Take a well-deserved rest. Have a good Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week. Happy Thanksgiving. The heart is a bloom Shoots up through the stony ground There's no room No space to rent in this town 
the reason that you had to care. 